Okay, it's time for fall painting with fall leaves in it, number two. Um, so you can see this one's just did that one. Uh, it turned out great. This one was just blown with my mouth. Um, no silicone, just paint and flow troll and water. And now this one, I'm gonna be doing sort of a chaos pour is what I think Rinskadowna calls it, where it's a Dutch pour, but you don't cover the whole canvas with white first, just most of it. So I still want lots of negative space to put fall leaves in. But I'm going to have some of these colors kind of in the corner here, straight on the canvas. And then, and then blow the white down on top of them and then blow the colors up and hopefully it'll create, you know, sort of one corner accent instead of bands. So let's spread it out. Okay, there's my white base, and I've covered everything but this little corner. I don't know if you can see that since it's white canvas, white paint. But uh, now I'm going to take these fall colors and just kind of layer them on. I don't have tons of these colors because um, my other pores, you know, you use like half an ounce of each color because you're only putting on a little strip of it. And for this, you need a little bit more, not tons. Um, okay. Man, this is a lot of colors. This is probably too many colors. We'll see. Okay, so there's my colors on. Gonna add a little bit more of the white base. Um, and blow it down over the top. But I can't the water. You got a drink of Elliot's water? Yeah. Okay. Shh. You paint? Yeah, I'm painting. Okay, let's move it down. Okay, so here's my corner. It's got some beautiful multicolored streaks. Um, the edges I'm just gonna make more kind of chaotic, which I think makes it look more interesting. And then the leaves will be over here sort of tumbling down.
So on these ones, I do think I like breaking the loops into sort of tendrils instead of keeping them as loops. That's what I'm gonna do here. Okay, so I'm really liking it. The problem is it's gotten too big. That's what I thought might happen when I used the blow dryer in the first place instead of my mouth. So it's gotten too large. I love the solid color here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try not to touch this outside section. Instead of just going scrape, scrape and adding more white paint, I don't have tons and tons of white paint. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a palette knife and I'm gonna scrape up kind of this layer. And then I'll take the new edge and blow it out, kind of feather it. So I've gotten my, I've taken away the section that I don't like. Now I am going to just sort of wipe the last few areas that I couldn't quite get. Just get up the last bits before I add more of the base. This is why it's always good to have extra of your base color on hand, more than you think you need, more than you want to need, so that if you need it, you have paint that's already the right consistency. Okay, that's looking much more subtle, much more kind of contained this direction. I'd like to be able to get this color to blow out there. I think maybe I need to add more white here. I'm much happier with this pattern. I really like this, the color streaking that I have going on. I'm gonna torch in here to see if I can draw out any more colorful bubbles from the layers. But then I think this one's done. Okay, so I was able to pull some bubbles up here in this white section, I wish I could pull out more color, but there doesn't seem to be anything there and I don't want to scorch the paint. Very cool. Okay, so again, here I will have leaves kind of tumbling around. but I like that a lot. So stay tuned for the next step. Once this is dry, I'll show you how I add the leaves. Hey, so the painting is dry. It dried really nicely. It looks so shimmery with all the metallics. I love it. So now it's time to add the leaves. So these leaves, I've just, I've sort of laid them here figure out how they're gonna be. The nice thing about gluing them onto the dry painting is you can really play around with how is it gonna look. Um, and now it's time for me to glue them on. And I've just got Elmer's glue. 
I've got some on a plate. I have a paintbrush here. Um, and I'm just going to be painting the glue onto the back and then gluing it onto the, or, yeah, putting the glue onto the back of the leaves and then gluing it onto the painting. So let's start with the first one. So you, you want to cover the back of the leaf as completely as you can, but you don't want a really, really, really thick coat. Otherwise, when you press down on the leaf, the glue will all squirt out the sides, which you can do if you want, but then you have to wipe it up. So sort of a thin to medium coating of glue all along the back of your leaf. The reason we glue the leaves on instead of just sticking the leaves in the wet paint like I do with butterflies um, is that the moisture from the wet paint makes the leaves go brown. Even if you've sealed the leaves with like a spray sealer, the moisture still gets in and you'll end up disappointed with the color of your leaves because it'll all fade. So it's just better to let the painting dry and then glue them on because the glue dries much faster than paint. Also, when it's glued on, you can adjust the position a little bit without getting paint all over your leaves. If a little glue gets on the surface of the leaf, that's okay because it'll dry clear. Um, so right now, everything's good, but the stem is coming up from the surface just a little bit. So I've just got a pair of scissors or something else that you can use to just set right on, on the stem to gently weight it down while the glue can start affixing it to the surface. Okay, uh, next leaf. If your leaves are freshly pressed, I press mine in a book for a week or two, and that's usually enough to dry them out. If you're taking them basically straight from the book and putting them onto the painting, they should be quite flat. So some of my leaves are quite flat. Some of them, though, I took out of the book about a week ago, and they've just crinkled a little bit. They're still flat, they're still dry, but um, it's a little bit harder to get them glued completely flat just because they're a little wrinkly. So if that's the case, you just have to gently hold it down, um, sort of coaxing it to stay attached to the canvas until the paint can dry. Not the paint, until the glue can dry enough to actually hold it in place. So this one I had coming in like this. Okay, and then you just gently press it down. Yeah, the edges on this one are definitely more crinkly. It's gonna be harder to get contact all across the leaf. And you could sit here for five minutes just holding it down, but I don't really have time for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a piece of, just a little piece of scrap paper over it. Um, and then stick something just a little bit heavy on top of this. Not heavy enough to dent the canvas, but heavy enough that it'll keep 
the leaf press down. So I would use my scissors, but they're not really flat. So let me go grab something else that I can put the leaf, weight it down with. I've got just a little board book from one of my kids. And I'll just lay that on top of there to help hold it down. Make sure it's stuck to the canvas. I'm just checking to make sure there weren't any bubbles of glue, but there weren't. Okay, there we go. All right, so I've done two leaves there and I've got five more, but I'm not gonna show you the whole process because it's kind of boring, but you just do more of that. You glue, glue, make sure they're solid. And then um, I'll show you a close up when I'm all done. So here is the finished painting with all the leaves in it. I think that looks great. I ended up adding a few more leaves here. Um, after what I had showed you before, I just think it fills out the canvas better. But look at those metallics. I love it. So I sprayed this yesterday with a spray varnish. It really brings out the color of the leaves. I love how glossy it is. So I used a Krylon uh, triple thick clear glaze for this. And I love how that works. Thanks for watching.